last week was really, really beautiful to see Lindsay bless Ben and B and Abe and their families. And that is probably something many of us did not grow up with. But to just see the simple ceremony of bringing babies forward with their families and thanking God for these gifts. And every child that comes into our life is an opportunity for us to say, this is God's love. And for us to pass on what we have discovered about God's love so that the next generation will also be inspired, not by us, but by the one who gives all of us life. And it was just beautiful for us as a Church of Christ to stretch and learn to do new things that are deeply meaningful. And I hope you were blessed by it as much as I was. And in such a short time, these babies will look a lot like Kinsey and be grown and ready to stretch out her wings and to stretch those parental cords to the point of it's time to cut the tie, even though we will never cut the bond of love between parents and their children. We do not own our children. They are just given to us as gifts to get to bless and to pass God's love on to, to comfort them as they grow, to guide them, and then to set them free. I have known Kinsey since she was really little, and I want to tell one little funny story about your witches. Um, when she was just in my class for one of the very first times, I wanted the kids to make flowers. You know me and nature. I love nature. So the kids made flowers, and I was going to try to have the kids compare their flowers to God's real flowers. So I asked them, well, what do you, how do you think they compare? And Kinsey said, I think mine is about just as good as God's. <laughs> and um, just the joy and innocence of a child, her flower looked lovely. It really did. But we talked about, well, will it grow? And will it produce more flowers? But, you know, as children, it is just a joy to see kids learn their gifts, to express them. And as we age, we grow in our humility and we grow in our awe of God. And that is what we definitely hope for your whole journey to be like, Kinsey, that you continue to grow. Another very special memory to me, one, one summer, Kinsey was helping with the summer lunch program and she wrote out the fruits of the spirit with the kids and little drawings with each one of them. And it's been hanging on my fridge like for a, many, many years here at the office, just a memory of Kinsey, you know, looking at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, adding a little symbol that goes with each one of those words to remember that when God dwells in us and grows in us, God's fruit is continually growing in our hearts. Um, so we get these blessed little gifts, as the picture showed Kim holding this brand new newborn baby, and we get to pass on some of these treasures that we have discovered about God's goodness and pass on to them that you are a beloved child of your parents and your grandparents and your brother, but of God. You are God's beloved daughter and everywhere you go, that will go with you for sure. So this year has been a rough year for many people. Cindy and I participated in Pepperdine's um, lectureship for um, church leaders virtually, um, but in it they really talked about how hard this year has been 
and that there is a significant number of ministers who are considering leaving ministry because the year has been so hard. And just hearing them say that is kind of validating because everywhere I look, I see that people have had a hard year. Starting college for Chloe was not normal. That was a weird year to start during the pandemic. And to realize some of these struggles have just been hard. Teaching with a mask all day is not easy. Um, trying to teach first graders how to read or kindergartners how to read and they cannot see your lips is almost beyond human capability. Teaching people to sing with a mask on had to have been rough. And numerous things that have happened in our society the death of George Floyd, which is about a year ago now, seeing that, just an added weight to put on the shoulders of humanity to see racism spelled out in that way is just heartbreaking. And this very weekend, for us to be experiencing the 100-year anniversary of the Tulsa massacres, which my mother is from Oklahoma, near Tulsa, and I had never heard of that in my whole life. And I would not be surprised if there's some people here who do not know about this event. But it is part of our history, and it is something that is honorable to reflect upon and to say Christ calls us to something totally different from that. And that is not the way his followers should be treating other human beings who are made in God's image. I want to tell you a little story about Mount, Mount Zion Baptist Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They had just finished their building before the massacre of, of 1921. And a truck with a machine gun came up to the church building and destroyed it. The church building in no way was paid off. They had to pay on it for 20 more years, even though it was destroyed. And the insurance company said, we don't owe you anything. So they paid off the debt that been, had been destroyed by hatred, and then they rebuilt. And that, to me, is just a testimony of God's grace flowing through people who had seriously been harmed and hurt and saying, we are going to continue to be dispensers of God's grace. Their perseverance and tenacity in Greenwood, Oklahoma, speaks of God's grace. That is what inspired them to continue on. Let us pray. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and a hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of the reality is being unveiled for us to see. Remove our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Awaken in each of us, in all of your children, the greater truth greater humility, and greater care for all who are made in your image. May we place all our hope in what matters and what lasts eternally. May we trust in your eternal presence and abiding love. 
Listen to our heart's longings for healing in, your, in our suffering world. Knowing that you are a good God and that you indwell us, we know that you hear better than we even know how to pray. But we offer these thoughts in your holy name. Amen. Today is really Trinity Sunday. And, boy, Trinity Sunday. Trinity is a mystery that our youngest person here and our oldest person here cannot fully comprehend. How God can be three but one, one yet three, is a mystery that we all our lives can wrestle with. All our lives, we can try to understand this more fully, and we will never be able to say, oh, I got that. I'll, I can explain that without any problem. Because God is bigger than our understanding. We can ask for more wisdom, but we will never be an equal to God. We are God's creation, and God is the source of all of life. God is up there, and God is down there, and God is on our sides, and God is inside us. And how can we understand that God is choosing to dwell inside of us as broken human beings? How is that mystery possible? But all our lives, we can use all of the senses that God has given us and discover more and more of his awesomeness. And the difference between us as a creation and God as the giver of life, that separation as we age becomes clearer and clearer. But the wonderful thing is that God has chosen to become one of us and to walk and live like we do. Jesus became hungry and needed food. Jesus became thirsty and needed a drink. And Jesus became impatient at times when he told Peter, get behind me because what you're speaking is not what the Father's way is. Jesus knows what it's like for us to be heartbroken. His followers betrayed him after all the time he spent with them. He knows what it's like for someone to betray us. And he feels our broken heart. And he is not leaving us alone in those moments. The scripture that we read earlier today Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts, the whole world is full of your, of his glory. Our whole life, God sends us on an expedition to discover the holiness in the whole world. That is our simple task, to discover what God is giving, what God is doing, and then we can reflect that into the parts of the world where they do not lo know God's love. That scripture goes on, and in the vision, the, the coal is pulled out of the fire and is touched to someone's lips, and the person realizes their brokenness. And they realize the difference between the holy God and them. But God says that 
He has purified this brokenness. And once we discover that, once we discover that God purifies all our brokenness, no matter what we have done, God counts it as forgiven. And then when Jesus, when God says in that scripture, who can I send? All of us who have accepted the forgiveness can say, send me because I know the gospel good news. I know that my brokenness is forgiven and you have accepted me as a beloved child exactly in my state. And that is how we can journey through every day of our life. We can say, God, fill us with the fruit of your spirit. And as Kinsey wrote out so long ago, God, fill us with your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your gentleness, your faithfulness, and your self-control.